How's it going guys? So in today's tutorial, we're going to be tackling this satisfying animation loop. I was inspired by CG Geek's recent satisfying loop animation tutorial, and I thought I'd give it a shot and make my version of what I would make for something, um, you know, satisfying and really nice. So credit goes to him. He's awesome. So in this tutorial, you actually might recognize some of the processes um, from an older tutorial, but we're going to be diving into a lot of other things. I'm going to be showing you why these things are satisfying. So I'll be going into the materials, the animation, how smooth it is, the actual beveling and things like that, shading and all that that come into play and why this is such a nice, satisfying animation to look at. Now, just a heads up before we get into it, this project file is available in the description for a dollar. If you are on Patreon, you'll be getting that for free. If you don't know about the Patreon, there's tons of assets on there, exclusive tutorials, project files, bunch of cool stuff going on. So you can go check that out in the description, but let's get into how to create this. All right, so we're gonna start off with just the default cube and we're gonna hit tab really quick. We're gonna hit this little icon over here, the move tool. Now we're gonna hit control and snap the uh, pivot point right here to the very bottom. That's very, very important. Now, shift A, we're gonna go ahead and add in a circle curve and we're gonna scale it up to however big you want. That part doesn't matter. Now let's take this guy, go to the um, transform options and bring him up. Also this size part does not matter either. Before we add modifiers, we're gonna hit tab here, go to face select, we'll hit this one, hold down control, hit this one, hit X and click faces. Now we have a hollow square. Now let's go over here, hit tab and get the loop cut tool. Click once and we're gonna bring up this down here and just bring it up, eyeball it, make yours look just about here. And then we're gonna hit away, go to tab, click this move tool, now hit A to select all of them. Now we're gonna subdivide it and we're gonna make it smooth right over here. Now so we'll subdivide it more later, but now what we're gonna do is we're going to add in a simple deform right over here, uh, right there, simple deform, and we're gonna add in the twist. Now let's go over here and I believe it's the Z axis, yep. And right here on angle, 360 degrees to give it a full rotation here. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add in the next modifier. Now this modifier um, hierarchy is important, so make sure the order is correct that you see what I'm doing. Hit the curve modifier, and select the curve and then hit Z. Now go back to our object um, transform settings and on the Z, scale it up. Now you wanna make sure that it does not overlap. So if you hold down control, you'll give a get a better, more smooth um, connection. I mean, you know, movement and just barely have them um, hit each other. So right there is perfect. It's okay if it kind of overlaps, but you don't really want that. So now we have this. Now we're gonna hold down control here and click cube and the Bezier circle. Now hit R, X, 90 so we can rotate them like that. And I'm gonna go ahead and hit control A and apply the scale on our cube just in case we have any problems. Now we're gonna animate it. So right over here on end, hit one, two, zero for 120 frames. Hit edit preferences and make sure that your default interpolation here on the animation tab is on linear. So make sure you click linear and we're gonna animate this now. So we're gonna animate this here, I believe on the Y. Okay, cool. So the reason why we actually used a cube and a Bezier circle to create a torus is to get this animation right here. And this is the part that you might recognize from an older tutorial. Now we're gonna hit this little keyframe icon, go to here and hit the right arrow to skip a frame. So we get a perfect loop and type in 360 to get a full 360 degree rotation and then press play. And we get a beautiful, nice looping animation. And it's awesome. So. Let's go and make that particle. Now you'll notice how smooth this is. We, If you g give it any less frames, it'll be really fast and it won't be that nice to look at. So you wanna make sure you have a smooth, slow animation so you can just sort of watch it forever and it's really nice to look at. Now, Shift A, we're gonna make this particle. We're gonna go to Cylinder. Now here on the radius, we're gonna bring it down a little bit and um, on the vertices, keep it at 32. And then on the depth, just bring it up a little bit right about there and bring him over here to the right. I'm gonna hit Control A and apply scale, and we're gonna add in a bevel modifier to this so it looks really nice. The reason we're adding a bevel modifier is because if you want satisfying, nice looking renders, you don't want any hard edges because they look sharp and not nice. You Basically, you wanna make something that you would wanna touch, um, and it, no one wants to touch hard edges. So we're gonna go ahead and add a bevel modifier, and then we're gonna give it maybe five segments, and then bring our width around, hit angle, so that you get more, uh, more you know, length a distance on our bevel and then shade smooth and now you have a nice beveled uh, particle now very important let's go ahead and on the y rotate it by 90 degrees because that's how it's going to be on this animation here let's go ahead and start and add that uh, particle setting so hit the plus icon click hair 
on source, go from faces to verts, it's very important. And then right here on render, we're gonna go from path to object and select our object, which is the cylinder. Now you're gonna see this. You're gonna to wanna to click regrow. And then the last thing you wanna click is object rotation. And we're gonna get those nice straight up and down uh, particles. Now, to make it look nice, we're gonna go ahead here on our um, torus and we're gonna subdivide it till it's nice and smooth. So right about there, number of cuts, and then right click shade smooth. And then we're gonna take our uh, scale randomness and bring it down and our scale, bring it up. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit the cube and the bezier circle and I'm gonna scale it down a little bit and then bring our uh, object scale down. It's right around here. We don't want this, um, these two things to be very big because then it doesn't, starts to not look very nice. Now, okay, so now what you gotta do is just play around with your um, object scale and randomness until you like what you see and just preference. All this is just personal preference here press play, you'll see you get those nice objects and things like that. And just play around with it right here. Um, turn off random order, things like that. So just play around with the settings until you like what you see, but make sure not to mess up your settings so, so that it's bad. Now keep these at default settings. These look pretty cool. So, so far we have this nice and almost like fur, but you know, very thick fur. Now let's go ahead and make that scene around it. So I'm gonna hit, hold down control, bezier circle and my cube and we're gonna bring it up and we're gonna go ahead and make that platform. So what I'm gonna do is get a, I'm gonna get a cylinder and then bring that down, bring the depth down right around here. This looks nice and then bring my vertices till we get a nice circular look and then we're gonna control A, apply scale and then make sure everything is beveled. Beveling is very important for these things so that you get nice smooth edges shade smooth and we have this perfect first little platform that we want and then we'll bring make sure and make sure nothing is touching so just like that make sure none of the particles are intersecting with the bottom plane now what i'm going to do is i'm going to duplicate it by hitting shift d and i'm going to move him down till he's not intersecting and then scale him up like this now every time you scale you want to hit Control a and apply scale so the bevel updates with this object maybe bring it down a little bit it's a little bit too much and then of course, control A, apply scale. So we get nice bevels. And then let's say maybe this one's too sharp. Bring up, play around with the bevel until you like everything that you see. All right, next I'm gonna add a plane under everything. Bring it way up, control A and apply scale. Now make sure you wanna apply scale on everything because not only does apply scale affect your modifiers but also affects your shading. So you wanna make sure you're doing that to prepare for when you start shading. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to the curves, hit the circle, scale it up. So I'm gonna bring them up a little bit so I can see what's happening. Scale them up, and then here in the curve settings, go to render preview and render U, and bring them both to 64. And then on geometry, I'm gonna go and extrude to right about there, and then I'm gonna hit F3, type in convert. Now this is a very roundabout way of doing things, but I just like the way this one looks. Convert to mesh. So now when you hit tab, so when you hit A, you select all of them, hit E and S and extrude them out like that and you get some nice flat plane. We'll make it pretty big. So now that we have this, we're gonna hit tab, control A and apply scale. And we're gonna add in, of course, a nice bevel to this. Turn it on angle and then bring your width and your segments up just like this. And then you're gonna wanna bring it down until it plays with that. Now, if you wanna make this wider, you'll go back to tab and then go to face select. You'll select one of these faces, hold down alt, you'll select the whole thing and you'll scale it back. Just like that, control A, apply scale. So now we have our platform. Let's go ahead and add that camera. Now I'm gonna use an orthographic scale here. So control alt zero, snap it to view. Go here to your camera settings and go from perspective to orthographic. And then you play with orthographic scale to zoom in and out. I love orthographic view. It solves problems when it, for me when it comes to, you know, trying to find a cool composition for these sort of abstract renders and orthographic usually looks pretty nice. So give it an angle you like, control alt zero, snaps it to view. And then here on this one, I'm gonna go ahead and control alt, scale them out so that our camera can't see the edge. Perfect. And now we have this. And then you can just go ahead, hit R twice and then rotate him up, just like that. So now we have our scene, we can just press play and see how it's looking. And it looks really, really awesome. 
let's go ahead and start doing that shading. That's gonna add to that nice, satisfying look. Now we're gonna use a color palette. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna to go to the internet and type in Adobe, Adobe Color, right here, adobe.color. All right, so we're here on Adobe, Adobe's color palette website here. So we're gonna to go to explore and I'm gonna type in orange because I wanna use a sort of orange kind of look. Now, when it comes to satisfying color palettes, you don't wanna use something very abrasive like reds. Even oranges can be messed up, uh, but you wanna use a palette that looks kind of nice and calming to look at. So you can just go through and see which one you like. Um, it took me a while to pick one, so don't think it's gonna take you two seconds to find your palette, but we'll go with this one. This is a very calm, muted looking palette. So what you have to do, all you have to do is go hover over the color you like, click it, and it's gonna copy this hex code to your computer. So I'm gonna go and I'm gonna click on our particle so we can shade it. Let's go over here to the shading tab. I'm gonna click new, right here on base color, go to hex and control V and it pastes that color into your object. And then we'll just go ahead and apply that same material to the torus in the middle. And then we'll go back to the site and say, I want the darkest color to be this plane right here. Go ahead, new color palette here and just paste that in. So go ahead and go and pick the palette you want. Go ahead and distribute the colors you like and we're gonna continue. All right, so now we have this. I'm gonna go just add in a, the, one of the default HRIs and we have this really nice looking render. Now picking the composition, I'm gonna just change a couple things up. All right, so so far we have a nice looking render. It's very simple, it's very almost boring to look at. So we're gonna go ahead and start adding some special stuff in the shading to up our composition. So go back to shading. What we're gonna do really quickly, add in a mix shader right here. We're gonna duplicate this right here by sh hitting Shift D and we're gonna make it a white, very bright, metallic and no roughness and plug that into the shader tab right here. We're gonna to go to material preview. So far it looks like this, we'll shade smooth. So far it looks like this. We're gonna get a color ramp and a Voronoi texture. Get a color ramp and a Voronoi texture right here. We're gonna hit Control T on the Voronoi if you have the Node Wrangler add-on enabled comes default. We're gonna use color right here and we're gonna use the color ramp here. And what that's gonna do is help distribute these two shaders on this plane. And I think we're actually gonna use distance. And now we're gonna get some circles. So all you have to do is go from linear to constant, bring this in just like that. And we're gonna get some circles. Let's let's flip the order here so we can get the, uh, the metallic part as the dots. And then you can bring in this color ramp to say how um, big you want your dots to be. And then when we go to render view, we get these nice little dots of metallic sort of speckles and it adds some interest. We're gonna do the same thing right over here. So what you're gonna do is just highlight these, hit Control C, click on this material, Control V, and you can hit G to move it around and we're just gonna add that to the roughness of this pink one. So let's just go here and plug it into the roughness. So we're just gonna go ahead and tweak it a little bit, make it a little bit bigger, make the Voronoi a bit smaller so we can get more obvious little circles here in our shading and we already are looking at a much better more interesting view now you can see on mine on the final render here added some circles i mean some spheres just to add some composition so you can go in and um, add little things that you think will make your composition look better have fun be artistic now the last thing for my lighting is i went ahead and i went to hdri haven right here hdri haven and i went in and i picked an hdri so we're going to go with skies and we're going to pick a nice soft one. So let's go ahead and say, um, I'm going to pick cloud layers and we're going to download the 4K one. Now, once you have your HDRI downloaded, we're going to go to the world tab here, click this, click environment texture, open, and you're going to want to go ahead and open up that HDRI. And then I'm going to go ahead and use scene world, scene lights. And this is my lighting so far. And then what I did was I put 0.3 on the strength. And then I went ahead and I added three area lights. So you wanna have the HDRI to sort of overall light your scene and get good reflections. And then you're gonna to wanna to use these area lights to get more specific lighting and a better, you know, better soft lighting here on your scene. Now use area lights. It's very important to get good soft lighting. If you look on my channel, go to the search bar and type in lighting. I have a tutorial on several different lighting setups and we're gonna be using one of them right now. So this is just a three point lighting setup. 
So depending on the scale of your scene, that would depend on how bright you need to make your light. So don't be afraid to add big numbers. I'm gonna need some big numbers for this. So 3000, cause my scene is pretty large scale. And then the last time we're gonna take this guy here and shift D to duplicate him over to this side. Just a simple three point lighting, very soft lighting setup to give more emphasis on our uh, object here. And now we have a nice scene. Again, go back into your scene and uh, see how, how you want to add some things. I added some depth of field, add some spheres to just make that composition look much better. And then you just press play here and uh, you'll get a nice scene. This is EV, so it looks a little bit more bland. And uh, yeah, just go in, play with it, make it look better. And then at the end, for those of you who can use cycles, use cycles. I personally think it, look, think it looks the best. You can go in and play and make it look as cool as you want. And there you go. That's how you do it. Thanks for watching.